previous lessons, we learned about the titration curves and how we have the titration curves of a base or an acid. So, for example, in this case, we have a titration curve of an acid, okay? And this is the titration curve of a base. Now, the most difficult part of titration is calculating the pH or the pOH of the solution. That is because you can titrate different types of acid and base, and they have different way of calculating the pH. For example, the strong acid and strong base titration always have this characteristic, and that is at the equivalent point. This pH is always 7, either strong base or strong acid titration. So it's always, okay? So this is always a pH of 7. And this is the equivalent point. Before we solve any particular problem, we need to understand what is the graph really telling us. So if I am titrating a strong acid with a strong base, this right here, this part right here, what's happening here is the remaining acid that's not neutralized by the base will determine the pH, okay? Where right here, we have the number of moles of acid is equal to number of moles of base that is at the equilibrium point. But what happened when we pass that point is this. But what does that really mean? That means that all the acid has been neutralized once you get to the equivalent point. So what happened when you pass that equivalent point? So once you pass the equivalent point, this section right here, this pH will determine by the excess base. Well, because it is a base, the only thing you can do is you have to calculate the pOH first before you can solve for pH. The same thing on the bottom here, but we take the opposite approach where we are starting from a high pH. So what determining here is you have to find the pOH. So this has to be solved in terms of pOH. That is because it is determined by the remaining base. So whatever the base that's left over that's not neutralized by the acid, okay? Remaining base. And then after is equivalent point, what you have here is that all the base has been neutralized by the acid. So this will be the excess acid. Because it is an acid, you have to first calculate your pH to find pOH. So that's the concept behind this. Let's solve a problem. A student titrates a sample of 25 milliliter of HCl with 0.2 molarity standardized NaOH. So if you notice, these are both strong, okay? They're both strong acid and base. So both hydrochloric acid and sodium hydroxide, both are strong acids. So they dissociate 100%. That means they will break into ions, specifically that one, and this one will be OH minus, okay? And it's required 30 milliliter of base, uh, and it's required 30 milliliter of the base to reach equilibrium point, which means at the pH of 7. Notice how I read the problem, and I interpret the problem based on what I already know. So what is the pH at 30 milliliter of the base being added. 
So the first question is, what is the pH when 30 milliliter of the base is added? Well, isn't that 30 milliliter of the base right there? That is at the equivalent point. So this is at the equilibrium point. That means pH must be at 7. So pH equal to 7. And this is always, okay, for a strong base and strong acid titration. That's the unique characteristic of strong base and strong acid titration. So the pH equals 7 at equilibrium point is a unique characteristic that always happen when you have a strong base and acid titration. For B, what is the initial concentration of the sample? So we have to look at the equilibrium point where the number of moles of acid is equal to the number of moles of base. So we know exactly how much base is being used, 30 milliliter. To solve this problem, you have to go back and look at the equilibrium point where the number of moles of acid is equal to the number of moles of base. So this give us the mole ratios, okay? And that allow us to solve for the moles of HCl. So we have 0 0.03 liter of NaOH, okay? That's from 30 milliliters time the molarity of the NaOH, which is over 1 liter of NaOH. And top is 0.2 zero zero moles of NaOH. And now we're going to use this mole to mole ratio, okay, which is one moles of NaOH equal to one moles of HCl. And how do I know it's one mole? Because if you notice, if I were to write this reaction out, okay, I have HCl plus NaOH, and that produces NaH plus and plus water. And the net ionic equation, of course, is going to be water and this and that. So H plus OH minus equal to H2O. Because this one is soluble. It's not going to affect anything. So, and if you notice, the ratio is 1 to 1 because the coefficient is 1 to 1. So that's how I get 1 to 1. Okay? Now let's continue. So I plug into my calculator, 0 0.03 times 0.2. And notice how everything cancel out. And this gives me 6 times 10 to the negative third mole of HCl. And I'm going to divide by the volume of the sample. Which in this case is 25 milliliter. Or 0 0.025 liter. And this give me, okay, this equal sign give me 0.24 molarity HCl. And that is the initial concentration of our acid. And now we know the concentration of hydrochloric acid in that sample. Now the next part asks, what is the pH tree? This is where it's going to get interesting. First of all, if you notice, we have to find the initial concentration first before we can do anything. We have to find a concentration of the acid and the base first before we can solve any pH for any problem. If you notice, if you notice, we have to use, if you notice for any type of titration problem, we have to use the equivalent point to solve for the concentration of the acid or the base from the sample before we can solve any pH for any particular volumes, okay? So keep that in mind. For example, what is the pH of the solution after 15 milliliter base is added, which is NaOH? So what we have here, again, we have to realize that HCl is added to NaOH, and that produces this. But we only care about this part in terms of our net ion equation. Well, this will dissociate. Remember, this is a strong acid and strong base. It will completely dissociate into ions. So this is H plus, and this will be OH minus. And combined together, they make H2O. And we know it is 15 milliliter, and that is equivalent to 0 0.015 liter. Okay? So I can solve it in terms of mole. When we solve for the changes we have to calculate into a mole and look what happened. 
point zero one five liter times the molarity of the base, which we know, right, is point two molarity. So point two molarity, and give us a number of mole. In this case, we plug into the calculator, and we get three times ten to the negative three mole. Okay, that's the moles of OH minus or NaOH. What about the HCl? We know that in the sample, how much sample do we have? 25 milliliter. And that's the sample in the flask. And here is 25 milliliter. Okay, and now we're adding in what? 15 milliliter of the NaOH. So let's solve the moles of hydrochloric acid in the sample. So of course we have 0 0.025 liter times the molarity, which we figured out, 0.24 molarity, okay? And this give us six times 10 to the negative three mole, okay? And this consider as our initial. And followed by the ice table, we have C. What is the change going to be? Of course, the base and the acid are going to react and neutralize each other. In this case, we have a small amount of base. It's going to completely use up to react with a large amount of acid. So the change will be so the change will be minus three to the negative third. So the change will be minus three times ten to the negative three moles of the base, and the same thing is going to subtract on this side, minus 3 times 10 to the negative 3. Again, on the reaction side, we use up, so that's why we subtract. And over here, we have plus 3 point. And over here on the product side, we have 3 times 10 to the negative 3. But we don't care. This is water. We don't care about that. We only care about this part. The H plus and the OH is what determine a pH and a pOH. So in this case, at equilibrium, we would have zero here. But here, we have six times 10 to the negative three minus this. That give us three times 10 to the negative three. So this give us three times 10 to the negative three. And that is the leftover mole. So this mole is the leftover or the remaining, right, as we presented up here. Right there, this is the remaining acid. But we know that HCl will dissolve into the H plus ions, which give us the pH, okay? So now, if we have the mole, what can we do? We have to find the molarity. So what we need to do is we have to divide this by the new volume. or by the total volume. In this case, what is the total volume? It is 25 in the flask plus 15, that's of the base. So this is 15 NaOH, and this is in the sample, okay? That give us 40 milliliter total. And to solve for it, we are going to take three times 10 to the negative three mole of HCl divided by 0 0.04, okay, liter. And this give us our molarity in terms of the hydrogen ions. And, and then this give us, again, and then this give us the concentration of 7.5 times 10 to the negative 2 molarity. And this is the molarity of what? This is the molarity of HCl, but also equal to the molarity of hydrogen ions, H+, plus, because this dissociate, because it's a 100% dissociation. It is a strong acid, okay? So now to find the pH, we just take the negative log. That's what P stands for. 7.5 e to the negative 2. And that give us, using the calculator, we have 1.12. And that makes sense. This is very acidic. What if I want to find the pOH? So pOH, of course, is equal to 14 minus 1.12. And this give us 11.88 for pOH. 
And if I have my pH, can I find a concentration of H? And if I have my pOH, can I find a concentration of OH? Yes, that's pretty easy. It's 10 times to the negative 11.88. Now, let's solve another problem. We know that 30 milliliter is at equilibrium point, right? So let's prove it. That really exists. Now, because we know our molarity. So in this case, we, again, we have H plus plus OH minus equal to H2O. And we know that already. And at 30 milliliter, that is 0 0.03 liter times the molarity of NOH, which we know is 0.2. And this gives us our number of moles. What is our number of moles going to be? 6 times 10 to the negative 3. Okay, this is the number of moles. How about here for our H plus? Well, in the sample is 25 milliliters, so it's 0 0.025 liter time molarity, which is 0.24 molarity. And that would equal to 6 times 10 to the negative 3 moles. Notice how the two mole each other. So that tells you that this is where pH is equal to 7 always. Now let's do a problem. Now let's do a problem where we know that it is passing the equilibrium point, right? Now let's do a problem where we're adding a lot more of the base so that it passed the equilibrium point. So that the leftover, the excess amount of base is what determines. So notice how we pass the equilibrium point is the excess amount of base. So we're not going to be able to solve pH directly, but you have to solve in terms of base, which is the pOH. So the same thing, we have H plus plus OH minus. And notice how I put space because I need to show the work. And this gives us H2O. And for the base, is 45 milliliters. So we have 0 0.045 liter times the molarity of the base, which is 0 0.2 molarity. And this gives us And this gives us equal to 9 times 10 to the negative 3 moles okay, of NOH or OH minus. It doesn't really matter. And over here for the H plus, it's the same sample. We're using the same sample. So in this case, 0 0.025 liter times the molarity, which is the same, 0.24 molarity, and give us 6 times 10 to the negative 3 mole. Okay? And of course, you notice now the number of base is a lot more compared to the acid. So what happened is this, is now all this acid will be neutralized. So we're going to, this is our initial. Now our change will be minus 6 times 10 to the negative 3. And over here, minus 6.10 to the negative 3. And over here, we would have minus 6 times 10 to the negative 3. You see how, how the concept works? All the acids have been neutralized by the base, and we continue to add more base. That's why we have the excess. So this at equilibrium would equal to zero. But here we have three times ten to the negative three of OH minus. So now this is in terms of moles, of course. So how do we get the molarity? We divide by the new volume. So this is the new volume right here, or the total volume which in this case we have what 45 milliliter plus 25 which give us a total of 70 milliliter and if we do the math 3 times 10 to the negative 3 moles of OH minus divided by 0 0.07 liter and this will give us and this give us a concentration of OH minus or the base 2.9 times 10 to the negative second molarity OH minus. Now, because this is OH minus, we cannot solve for pH directly, so we have to solve for pOH, which is negative log of the concentration of OH minus. In this case, 4.29 times 10 to the negative second. This gives us 1.37. Don't get tricked by this 1.37. That's the pOH, not the pH. Okay, so let's find the pH. pH is equal to 14 minus 1.37, and this gives us 12.6, and that makes sense. This is basic because it's passing the 7, okay?
And that makes sense because this is, and that makes sense because the pH is 12.6 that represents the solution is basic. And because of, and that's because of the excess amount of base after neutralize all the acid in the sample. So always remember the situation where you, and, and always remember that this work for the titration of a strong acid and strong base only. It doesn't work for the titration of a weak acid or weak base. It has different scenario, okay? So keep that in mind, very important. And this is possible because strong base and strong acid dissociate completely in water.